Isaiah. Isaiah, the prophet, highly spoken of in the New Testament, 66 chapters, 66 books of the Bible, chapter 1, Genesis. I'll tell you what book of the Bible corresponds with the chapter number. And some outright match the books to the chapter. And I bet with studying to show yourself approved unto God, you can probably match each chapter number to the book. The vision. And you see a vision in Numbers 12, 6 of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. All right, so that gives us who the prophet is and his location. Now the time. In the days of Uzzah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Kings of Judah. So there's our time. There's our place. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. It's to everyone. Though his ministry is to Jerusalem and Judah, He starts out the very next verse telling where he is and who he is to the heavens and the earth. And there are three heavens. To those that are in the holy heaven where God, to the powers and principalities in the second heaven, isn't that interesting, and to the earth. This speaks out from those that are walking on this planet all the way to the holy. For the Lord has spoken. Now he's going to go into all the world, all the heavens, about the terrible testimony that Israel has with him. And what we're going to study tonight is something that you don't want God to be saying about you. When the book of Job opens up in the first two chapters, God reaches out and says, Have thou considered my servant Job? He excused evil and a perfect and upright man. He opens up with Isaiah and we're going to read. And yet they're still God's people. But they're miserable. And there's nothing assurance that the Bible is the word of God to have a Jew writing about his fellow Jew. I have nourished. Provided food. Water, wine, especially the testimony of them in the wilderness. From, from the Red Sea all the way to where we are today in Isaiah's time. Nourished and brought up children. Galatians 4, 1 through 4. God has given those Jews seed like the sand of the seashore. As the stars of heaven, he has blessed them with children. And brought them up, not only children, but brought them into adulthood. Brought up. And they have rebelled against me. We'll see that in 63, 7 through 10. 
See that throughout the whole book. It's God the Father with his children. Now, you apply this to the church. We're his children. We are adopted by God through the Holy Spirit by the testimony of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that we cry, Abba, Father. And we are in a day right now, you know what, as I read this, we're not as bad as Israel in the church yet. And the Bible speaks the church will be apostate. If you want to see how the church is going to end up, read the testimony of Israel before God about had it with them and brought in Nebuchadnezzar. How bad the church will be before he tells Jesus, go get your bride. Listen, it's not the Jews today that are being so wicked. They're just doing what they're doing. They outright rejected Jesus Christ. They're not like rejecting God. There is no temple for them. And we are God's children and we have rebelled against him. The ox knoweth his owner. Yeah, you think, you, I mean, you look at an ox, you think he's dumb, but he knows who his owner is. And the ass, stubborn, or your son, if you want to have a new Bible, just kidding, his master's crib. That stubborn animal knows where to go to get his food from, for, from his master. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. What's the church know today? Stop by a church who, who professes to know Christ as whatever they believe. Jesus Christ. Ask them questions of the Bible, see what they know. Then ask them questions about pirates and, and, and other junk and programs and see what they know. If you were to know the thoughts that go on in the pews Sunday morning, what they consider would shock you because it's anything but God and this is the condition of Israel in Isaiah's time and Isaiah means save thou Jehovah it's like Jesus Jehovah saves Jehovah saves he does Isaiah, save thou Jehovah. But we're at a point in time, Lord, step in. When the Titanic hit that iceberg, they didn't realize what the danger was. Here we are. The iceberg has struck. The children are throwing ice and snowballs at each other on the decks. And it was hours. The ship is gone, and many have died. And not all were able to get into the lifeboats. Some did. Many did not. That's where the church is. That's where Israel was. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. 
children that are corruptors like their Bibles there are people that are going into churches today supposedly Christian you know these Jews won't be in heaven they won't be in the new earth like there are people in the church today that will not be when the rapture calls. Listen, my sins are under the blood. When my preacher preaches to me, the Lord lays it to, to my heart that that's me. I get it under the blood and get my, try to get my heart right. And say, yes, that's my condition. I am not happy. There are people who come out of a church and they're not cleaned. They're not washed. Oh, but they smell of daisies and lilies and other kinds of pansy flowers. From a pansy message. From a pansy preacher. They come out with pride. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. How'd you like to be made? How'd you like to, this, to be known that you made God angry? God told Isaiah, write this down to those people. You make me angry. You know what God wrote down to the church today? You make me sick. Which is worse? I honestly tell you, from Isaiah says that you make me angry, and Revelation chapter 3 says you make me sick. What what is worse? They are gone away. Ready? Backward. You backslider. Isn't that a proper term for the church and where we are right now? Backslider. It doesn't say backslider. It says backward. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be funny? Now, come on. Hey, you're driving down the road. You're skipping church. Ha, ha, ha. You hear this church, right? And people are coming out of the church backwards. Wouldn't that look great? You be like, well, what's going on over there? That's what God says going on. You guys are coming out backwards. You're not going in filthy, coming out clean. You're coming, you're going in filthy and coming out filthier. You say, well, how can I do that? You're not getting the message that God wants you to get. You go in there with, with you know, with the fluffy fairy kind of message, I, I am such a good person and God is thankful I'm here today. Jeremiah 3, 6 and 11. Proverbs 14, 19. Or 14, 14. Hard to tell some of my notes here. My fours look like nines and my nines look like fours. Oh. Why? Why should I have to read any further? Why can't we just repent? Why couldn't Israel, or Judah, but you know what I mean, Israel, why couldn't they repent? Why does the uh, 65 more chapters need to be written? Why can't we just tell God earnestly from our heart, we are sorry that, that we have angered you? Why can't it just stop there? Why should ye be stricken anymore? God has stricken them. God has put things into your life and maybe put things in your life to say, Hey, I'm trying to get your attention.
knocking you on the head may be one of the things that one of the three. How can I say this? The heat that's in your life right now may be because God is trying to get your attention. That may be one of the reasons, of all many reasons. You need to stop. And you need to get with God and find out, hey, God, is what going on in my life right now, are you trying to tell me something? Are you trying to warn me? Are you angry with me? Ye will revolt. That is to rebel, despise, more and more. No evolution, it don't get better. Judah doesn't get better. And neither will the church. That's what the Bible says, not what I said. Read what Paul writes. Paul writes one of his churches. He's there, and he's writing it with tears and say, as soon as I leave, grievous wolves are going to come into the flock. And this is not 2015. This is when he wrote the church that he started. Don't you God... Aren't you glad that God's going to give you a new heart, new body, a new everything? The whole head is sick. Oh, there it is. Revelation 3.17. But the body is sick. Well, you know what goes on in the church makes God sick? And the whole heart, faint, weak, feeble. And you know what happens when you got a weak heart? It don't pump the blood like it should. You can't really walk or run with a weak heart. You need medication. You need a doctor. You need a diet with a weak heart. When the doctor tells you you've got a heart condition, you've got to stop your life there. And you need to say to the doctor, what must I do that I don't get laid up in a hospital from a stroke, from a heart attack? What things do I need to cut out of my life? You need to stop and ask the doctor, what do I need to do to stop and get what junk and sin is in my life out? Or one day you'll be walking through, through life and you'll grab your chest and you'll be dead. Unused by God. Having a filthy heart can give you early death. Second Timothy one seven. From the sole of the foot. That's the bottom of your foot.
You know, Jesus washed the, the, the feet of the disciples, the bottom of the feet. Onto the head. From head to toe. There is no soundness in it. Job from his head to his foot was covered with boil. And Job is a man pictured in the tribulation period. A sickening, diseased body by Satan. And all he could do is just scrape himself. Do you know in the law, you are unclean? And anybody that touched you or anything you sat upon was made unclean till they washed unto even. And God is speaking about the nation. These were to be the people that, were, that, the, that the Gentiles would come. Hey, what is this about your God? They can't come in to Jerusalem and say, what is about your God? When the Jerusalem, and when the people there, the, the Judah, are unclean by their law. And all they're going to do is make all those that come into the land unclean. There are people that I believe honestly seeking God, a percentage, I don't know, that go into a church. Hey, it's a church. It's a place to find God. I was there when I was 12 years old. I go up into a Catholic church and at the altar seeking God. A place in the history of a, of a church that killed Christians. Had I stayed in that establishment, that religion, I'd be dead today and going to hell. Thinking someone will pray for me and light a candle for me, I'd be okay for a little while. There are people today who are walking to the church trying to get right with God, and that church is unsound. Say this prayer. Truly, truly, Jesus said. Really? My Bible says, verily, verily. Evidently, you don't know what, the, what how V sounds. You don't know how T sounds. They don't sound the same. But wounds. Isn't that great? Wounds. Wounds don't come natural to a body. They have to be uh, afflicted from an outside source, even if it's a disease. Or somebody doing something to you. A church that has a wound came from another source. And bruises. Bruises come from being battered. And that's not bad enough. Pu pu I don't want to say putrefying, but putrefying sword. That is a decaying gag green. 
I can give you church names like that right now. I can tell you about churches I've been in that, that had tickets for a for a keg party. Let's bring the screen down for all the bouncing ball for singing. Let's have children on the children Wednesday night thing doing a, a, a cheerleading drill. We just had a whole week in the hospital. If I were to accidentally walk in a wrong room and there's someone lying in the bed who's got putrefying sores and wounds and bruises, uh, sorry, buddy, wrong room, you turn around and leave. And yet, there are people who go into a church like this. There's a nation here that we're reading Isaiah, the first chapter, and they don't. Watch what it says. They have not been clothed. Neither bound up. Neither moldified. And that is to uh, quiet, soften, calm with ointment. There is no medical attention for the cancer. You know what Jesus said? A physician is needed for when you're sick. They're not going to the great physician. And yet they have healing services. I read the paper. Three of them. Or two of them in, in, in a column of upcoming religious events. Healing. And God says, you make me sick. You're unclean in the law. You're unclean before God as a church. You need God's help. You need prayer. You need to get whatever it is fixed. You need to get cut uh, out. Both my wives had, had a breast cancer. You have to go in there. You have to remove it. You can't leave it. Because I, my understanding is it, it, once it's in a cell, it'll go to another cell. And what churches are doing is they're bringing this putrefying source into the church. All are welcome. You mean me and my, my, my sodomite lover? Yeah, come on in. I just love children. We got a job for you in the nursery. Bringing in more and more sin. And you know what you're doing? You're walking in the hospital, you're going to the emergency room, and, and you got these sores all over you, and the doctor says, you want me to fix you? No, what's that guy got? Well, that guy's got hepatitis. I'll take some of that. Come on in. And you go back to the emergency room, and now you got hepatitis, you got these sores all over you, and the doctor says, you want me to treat you? No, what's that, what's that woman got? She's got alcoholism. Hey, we'll have an alcohol club in our church. Come on in. 
I'll just call the church insurance company. Do you cover alcohol in, in, in that church? Yeah, we cover alcohol. I read the insurance brochures. We'll cover anything with alcohol. Bring it in. And God is going over in, in his holies of heaven and saying, Gabriel, give me a bark bag. Now, church, we're going to have a gospel magic show today. And you don't read in the book of Exodus that the magicians turn Pharaoh's heart away. We're going to dunk the pastor. We're going to have a dunking booth. So let's teach our children rebaptize, rebaptize, and use a ball to do it. Wait a minute. That's not teaching the authority of a pastor, a bunch of kids coming up and dunking the pastor. <laughs> Look at us dunk the pastor. You're supposed to treat him with respect, with honor. Titus says, you're, uh, I think it's Titus says, you're supposed to bow down. Be no, that's not Titus. You're supposed to bow down before a hoary head. Not rebaptize him in a dunking booth. The church is, uh, today is, come on to me, all you that want to sin and be comforted and sin in our church. Bring whatever Bible you want. As for those fanatics that, that go door to door, and as for those fanatics that, that preach on the street and tell you you need to be saved, you're going to hell. Don't worry about them. And I'm not talking about the Catholics. I'm not talking about the Presbyterians. I'm not talking about the Jehovah Witnesses. I'm talking about Baptist churches. One, two, three, say this prayer. Now let's gather at the table and have a meal. Oh, we won't get rid of you. We won't de church you. You were de church? Come with us. Those ignorant, bigoted people over there. Come, we'll, 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 we love you. You know, there are some wounds you need to cut out because all they're going to do is make it worse. Leprosy is one of them, cancer is another. Gag green, I believe, you have to, you have to get it removed or it'll, it'll spread. You know what the number one thing in your body, we're not getting as far as I thought we we're going to get. You know the number one thing in your body that carries diseases is your blood? Something wrong with your blood. Because if you had Jesus' blood running through you, you would have a conscience. You would want to get rid of the this, this sickness. You would want to get rid of the sore. This Sunday morning when my preachers preached, man, my heart was convicted. Sunday night, my preachers preaching, God, that's me. I'm not going to wait for the altar call. I'm going to right there in my pew, sit there and say, Lord, that's my heart condition. I'm sorry. I don't want to go to the emergency room and get someone else's troubles. I've got enough of my own. Notice the words. From the sole of your foot even to your head, there's no soundness. But wounds and bruises, putrefying sores. Not just one. You know what I mean? I want. I'm, I'm going back here because I want to say this right. Uh, hold on. Let me get this right here. And then you know, you know where they go to religion. Here's where they go. This is the name of the churches that people go to. Ready? 
Elifaz, Bildad, and Zophar. You know who those are? Those are the three guys that came to Job. With three religious philosophies. Which, which, I forget which church that Paul wrote to, his Ephesians, uh, Colossians, one of the, they, they went to Dr. Law. They went to Jesus, got saved, and then they brought Dr. Law back in. And Paul, uh, this is, Paul didn't go there, but Paul writes him a letter. Paul goes in there with a surgical mask, and the church is looking at what's wrong with you. I don't want what you got. What you holding, preacher? I'm holding a scalpel. Why? Because you got to get that removed. Corinthian church. you got a guy sleeping with, with his father's wife. Get the scalpel. Why are you allowing that in the body? It's amazing to me, as someone who, who, who tries to go out and tell people about Jesus Christ, and the people out in the world who bring up pastors and Christians they know that match these verses that we're reading right now, and then tell me, you know, oh, I know this. Yeah, I know. Isn't it sorry? See, I know a Christian, and he's sick. And he doesn't want no help. He doesn't think he's sick, but I look at that Christian, I know he's sick. Your country is desolate. The church is desolate. Oh, we got mega churches. We've got auditoriums of churches. And when these stinky jacket smell, uh, faith healers come in and they wound their jacket, you, you fall for the floor, not before healing, because their jacket stinks. We had 5,000 people. What are you talking about? Desolation of the church house. Jesus standing outside the door in Revelation chapter 3. Knocking at the door. It's desolate of God. It's desolate of Jesus Christ. Do you really think that Jesus Christ is in the church of the Latter-day Saints? Where they come down here on UFOs or whatever they do? They would move their church from, from Utah to Roswell. Let the, let, let, let the man, uh, let the bishop be the husband of one wife. Go tell them, oh, Utah. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. There are strangers of God in the churches today. That Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Wasn't I the deacon? Wasn't I the preacher at? Every 28 days, how far I preaching? Wasn't I so good? I never knew you. Didn't we take your word and bring it? I never knew you. Didn't I put money in the... I never knew you. And we're going to get into that. We're, we're, we're not getting as far as I thought we were. You wait the next time, Lord willing. Strangers devour it in your presence. 
There are lost people in the churches, and they don't want to not get lost, not get saved. Excuse me. They want to stay lost and enjoy it, and churches comfort them and help them and give them little title names, alcoholism. Well, we got a prevention program as overthrown by sto by strangers. You know what that? You know what verse seven is? Verse seven is army occupation. And they're not wearing the armor of God. Oh, they say they got. I, I see it all the uh, peace, prayer, faith, faith, love. Yeah. You know what those peace, love people, when I tell them about Jesus Christ, how they get in my face all uh, angry? We don't do it like that in our church. Stop judging others. That's not the way you should do it. You're turning people away. And what are you doing to do it? We're going to have a barbecue dinner Sunday. After, there will be no service Sunday night, but there will be, there'll be any kind of dinner Sunday. And bring people who wasn't even in church Sunday message. I have sat in church where they had a, a, a dinner at the church, no Sunday night service, and I have seen people at that barbecue dinner that were not in the church meeting. Well, we reached the lost people. How? Are you fattening them up for hellfire to be plump and juicy? The daughters... The daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard. I have no idea. As a lodge in a garden of cucumber. As a besieged city. Whatever it is, it's not good. It can't be no good, what we've been reading. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small raiment. You know what I am? I am a very small raiment with a King James Bible telling the lost world about Jesus Christ in hell and telling a Christian what he needs to do to grow in the Lord. I ain't going to give you pansies. I ain't going to give you lilies. I'm going to give you salt for your wounds. I am going to give you sugar when you need it. I will give you flour. I will give you bread. I will give you living water. I will give you honey. I will give you milk. I will give you steak if you're able to bear it. I had a woman one time to, to, for for a woman for another woman. Just have her say a prayer and, and we can get her. No. That's not the way. Very small raiment. That that carries the book, the old path. We should have been as Sodom destroyed. Well, wait a minute. We're, we're, we're done with this verse. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was Sodom destroyed? Did not God destroy Sodom? I think he did, right? I think he went in there with hellfire and, and, and burned that city right up. Aren't there churches out there today resurrecting Sodom and Gomorrah? Come into our church and we'll marry you two together. Do you take it and whatever it is to be a lovely whatever you are? You do? Welcome to our church. Hi everyone, I present you God's abomination. It's Mr. and Mrs. or Mrs. and Mrs. God's abomination. Throw the Bible out. That Christian people won't make a cake for you. Won't. <laughs> Let's go to a lawn. Go get them.
I want me I wonder how many churches back the sodomites with that Christian people that Christian family that that had their business. How many churches went against that Christian family? In the name of Christ, of course. Angel 4457, whatever his name is. What was God doing today? Something called uh, puking. He hasn't done that before. You haven't seen what those people are doing down there. In his name. What, 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 let's see, let's read on. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Destroyed. And you know what God says about this, this age? You know why God sends people, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, knocking on doors? Where once... Once in a month, our church sends the 12-year-olds out to go knock on our doors. You know why I go stand on the street corner along with, with my brothers and sisters, Lord, and, and preach or pass out gospel tracts or hold a sign? You know why the Daytona 500 comes up this month? We're going to be there, not for the races, but we're going to be there to give out gospel tracts and preach to people. You know why? You know why it ain't done yet? You know why the church ain't raptured yet and the world is condemned? It's going to be. But I'll tell you why it's not yet. Because God is long-suffering. God has me on the streets preaching at a farmer's market, though you don't like it. God says, I love you enough, I'm going to send that guy to go there and tell you what my word says. Because you sure ain't going to go to my church house. And since there's so many bad church houses out there, I will send them to you. Because you may fall into one of these ones that are, are wounded. And I don't want you to do that. So I will send a physician to you, make a house call to you. How's that? And the state of Mississippi last week told a doctor he cannot make house calls no more because it's illegal. I won't be surprised if America tells me you can't make house calls no more. And the Bible tells me, according to the book of Acts, go house to house and tell them. How about that? How about the fact is, I am a doctor. I am a doctor. I've got the degree of a doctor. Every Christian is a doctor. You go to the neighbors. You go to your family. You go to your co-workers. Even some people are even in your church. You go to them and say, you've got a disease. I've got the cure. And you'll find out many and most you can ask my wife as a testimony you can ask my children as a testimony most people rather enjoy the disease than get cured for broad is the way and many and many go the way to destruction Thank you very much. I love my, my disease called sin, and I know it pays. I love it. Well, see, I've got my work. Excuse me, sir. What happened to you? I got hit by a, by a train. Wow. What is that there? It's a Band-Aid. That's going to help me. That band is going to help your body after you just got hit by a train. Yeah. Really? 
That band is going to get you by. You better, You need to get in the hospital. You need to get uh, some multiplication. You need to get some ointment. Because that band-aid ain't going to do you no good. The Bible says that I am a very small raiment with my church that I attend. And we walk around, get this, I go, God's so great. We walk around with a little black doctor's bag. And I will walk up to you and say, hey, you know what? The Bible says, look right here, look what it says. It says the wages of sin is death. You're going to die. Well, I don't like that, doctor. You're going to die. Here's the cure. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. There's the cure. I just diagnosed your condition. You're dying. You're going to go to hell. Here's the pill. Jesus Christ. It says over here, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. People know I'm a Christian. They'll come up to me, maybe, hopefully. Something wrong with me. You're going to die. Oh, okay. After you die, you're going to go to hell. Ooh. What do I need to do? Well, let me get the prescription. You got a heart condition. It says that uh, with the mouth confession, man of salvation, with the heart, man believes in righteousness. That's your heart condition. That's what you need to do. See, I'm a doctor. I can diagnose your condition. I can do it for Christians. Well, I got this in my flee. Get away from the flesh. Turn to the spirit. Get the right fruits. That's just part of Isaiah chapter 1. We haven't finished chapter 1. And we got 66 more chapters to go in this book. I'm going to close with this. Jesus, Jehovah saves. Joshua. Isaiah. Save thou, Jehovah. Lord God, the, the, the condition around here. Save thou, Jehovah. The light's going out in the church. That bright beacon. Missionaries all over the world. The King James Bible of a nation that the sun never set upon the British Empire. Now we're just a little match light. Still going. 